My name is Yashish, reporting for First Updates Now, and with me today on Behind the Bot is Team 9974 Thor, uh, who just recently won the Chicago Robotics Invitational. And their robot today is very unique with these side intake spinners as well as boot wheels with a unique drone launcher as well. Uh, learn more about their robot with me on Behind the Bot. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com slash robots. So to begin with, let's talk about your drivetrain and any sensors that you use to track it during autonomous and during teleop and how you uh, use that to utilize and efficiently manage the robot during the game. We use an extremely basic uh, Magnum drive with three odometry uh, pods open source um, with Roadrunner. So we use uh, Roadrunner 1.0 to track our robot for our chassis. Was there any reason you chose Roadrunner 1.0 over 0 0.5 this year? No, we just had experience with it and we thought that that'd be the easiest to implement and use this season. That's really awesome. So moving on to the intake, uh, how did you guys decide on this boot wheel intake design with the side spinners? And what are some like iterations that you had to do during the season to really make it work properly? So originally we had a top-down intake, uh, most like other teams, but we realized with our specific intake, since it was already cut out, we didn't really change the intake geometry. So instead we used um, two AG FRC servos so we could um, get, get it from under the stack. So it's best for our design, at least. And then as the pixel moves through the intake and goes to the deposit, are there any sensors that you use on the way to ensure that the pixel is traveling correctly? Or does it just go to the deposit and you'll then use the deposit? Unfortunately, we didn't have the time to implement any sensors into our pixel loading area. We just didn't have a lot of experience with said sensors and unfortunately did not have the time. We want to in the future and would like to learn more about them in the off season so that we can implement similar mechanisms for next season. And then moving on to the deposit, what type of deposit is it? How does it work? Can you just explain that? So um, this is the world's only radial expanding jaw deposit. It gives us more contact and grip um, than any other deposit that we've found. It is also much lighter um, and smaller. Um, that's really interesting. Could you elaborate on how it really grips the pixel and deposits it onto a backdrop? So the inside of the, the, the pixel, we, we grasp that with the jaws and it'll actually orient the pixel because it's going to the corners. Um, and the, we just found that the center grab with the radial expanding jaws is better than just pinching the pixel um, because we got more contact. Uh, moving on to your hang and drone for the end game mechanisms, how do those work and did you have any trouble with them during the season having to switch out any parts for different ones because of torque or any other issues like that? So having a robust design and being a reliable robot is one of our team's strongest priorities. So throughout the season we've taken a lot of steps to improve the consistency of both our hanging mechanism and our drone launcher. Our hanging mechanism features a dual tape measure design that is held on by two spools and which has a volume spring applying consistent tension to the hook so that it can't unwind on the spools at any time. Then for our drone launcher, we have a design that fully encases the drone, which protects it from contact with other robots. We've often been hit head on by other robots in this area and the drone still does not come out due to the nature of the design. We went with a fully aluminum design for this reason, just so it could be durable and hold up to other impacts. And to achieve consistent results, we've analyzed a lot of data and we used a rail system, which is held in place by this latch. So there's no pressure on the servo until it engages an end game. And then having this linear rail makes it really smooth motion and having springs also helps us achieve consistent results. Whereas rubber bands can wear out over time as we determined. Yeah. And then moving on, did you do you have any driver enhancements to your code in order to allow you to have more efficient mo movements or maneuvers during the during the teleop session? 
Yeah, so we have presets on not only our lift, but also the rotation. They want to but also the rotation of the deposit to allow us to consistently be able to score without having to manually change everything. Uh, these lifts and presets also have a bunch of interlocks to stop it from damaging itself, specifically the deposit from twisting or swinging back when it's not supposed to. Um, is there anything else that you want to tell the viewers about your robot that you think makes it interesting or would be help for them in future seasons? One thing I'd like to point out is probably the reason that we won the Autonomous Award here at CRI is our custom vision pipeline that we use with our camera. Our team's been developing this for a few years and it takes the raw cam color data from the camera and translates it through a bunch of filters and then uses masks to detect exactly what zone it's in. It's allowed us to be able to detect the zone no matter the lighting and been extremely consistent in auto detection. Thank you very much for joining us on Behind the Bot, and we hope you have a great rest of your season if you're participating at any other off-season events. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com robots.